to the 15 people who watched the last video and of those 15 the one person that actually watched to the very end first off thank you very much it means a lot to me second you already know what this episode is about aren't you special you've probably been waiting for so long for this and it's been an entire week and i'm sorry to keep you waiting but thank you for watching to the end all the other plebs, they had to watch, uh, they had to read the video title to figure out what it was, but you, you already knew. But yes, today is all about guns, or blasters, actually, they're not guns. What are they? How do they work? All that and more on today's episode of Star Wars Nerds and Geeks. So we're starting from the ground up here. So what is a blaster? Well, it's kind of like the guns that we have on Earth, but it's a little bit different. First off, the blasters are, well, they're ranged weapons, but they shoot plasma or particle-based energy um, as their projectiles. And second, they can hold up to 500 shots in this miniature little ammo cartridge, and that's what they shoot out of. And third, they are powered by gas. So they're kind of similar to our real-world uh, guns, but they're also a little different. These blasters are a lot more uh, powerful than the guns in real life. Blasters are able to, really powerful ones, are able to like blow chunks in walls and stuff like that. And uh, before I get into the next part, I wanted to say one really interesting fact about, about blasters. I'm going to quote Wikipedia on what it says. Blaster bolts themselves carry no heat. On impact, however, their displacement of matter produced kinetic energy that caused heat. The atmosphere was displaced by the bolt's passage, causing the blaster's iconic sound. Materials struck by the bolts tended to deform and fuse, and liquids inside organic bodies instantly changed state to steam, expanding and doing terrible damage to surrounding tissue. Essentially what that means is blaster bolts carry a lot of energy, and when they hit people, that energy turns into heat, and the heat can be used to uh, boil their blood. So that is something that I did not know. Fun fact though, right? Very fun. All right, so now what does each uh, blaster bolt color actually mean? Because we see so many different colors of blaster. We see yellow, we see orange, we see red, we see green. What do they all mean? Well, the different colors of blaster bolts actually denotes like the type of gas that is being used to shoot, that is being used to power the gun and it shows like how powerful the bolt is and what it all does so first we have the most common one red red blaster bolts are made from gas that is really cheap and this is one that just about everybody uses and then we have blue blue is a gas that has been ionized so it's used to disable machines this is why the republic used it because they're fighting against droids and then we have green Green is the most expensive type of blaster bolt gas, but it's also the most deadly type of blaster bolt gas. And what's really ironic is that the Naboo used green blaster bolts, which is so weird because the Naboo are peaceful people, and yet for some reason they're using the most deadly type of blaster bolts. It makes no sense. I mean, I guess, of course... Since they are peaceful, they don't have a need for weapons, so it makes sense that they'd buy the most expensive best one, because they have money for it. But on the other hand, it makes absolutely no sense. I don't understand it at all. Uh, and then we have yellow and purple, and those are just different types of gases ranging in like uh, different levels of lethality, is that a word? Ranging in different le levels of lethality and cost. And then we have orange and cyan. Orange and cyan are, uh, well, first orange. Orange is essentially like a red blaster bolt, except it's not deadly at all. It's non-lethal and has less power. And so these are used as like uh, for training bots. And then cyan is similar to orange in that it's really similar to blue, except it's non-lethal. So it can be used for training and blasters, as you can see in a lot of movies, don't only shoot out uh, plasma, they don't only use the gas, they also sometimes, they sometimes are used to stun enemies. And how does that work? Well, it simply is that it shoots like normal, except it doesn't use the gas at all. 
So it's just a normal shot just without the gas. And that uh, creates a stun, which will stun the enemy for however long it will stun them for. Generally, it's not for very long. It's just long enough for you to get up to them, disarm them, and put them in cuffs. Now it's time to talk about how blasters work. I'm going to be using the DC-15 EU blaster rifle, which is the one that the clone troopers use, because I really like clone troopers, and I think uh, that blaster is really cool. But most blasters work really similarly. So first off, I just want to say two really interesting things about the DC-15E is that at the front there is a what's called a flip up optical sight and that's used to like you can flip it up and yeah. it helps you kind of aim and then at the bottom here where all the clone troopers like hold onto the blaster that's actually a sniper scope in storage position and you can flip it on the side to see enemies easier like it's a sniper now that that's all out of the way Let's talk about how the blaster actually works. I need to talk about three things that almost every single blaster has. Number one, besides of course like all the obvious stuff, number one is an ammunition clip. Wait, actually sorry, that was very obvious. Uh, but yeah, number one is the ammunition clip, the charge magazine, the battery pack, whatever you call it. That can hold so many shots on uh, the clone troop, the one that clone troopers have. They carry 500 shots. Um, and then the next thing that almost every single gun has is a power setting adjustment little knob. And you can use that to adjust how lethal the weapon is going to be. And if I'm not wrong, that's actually what will be able to uh, turn your weapon to stun if you switch the power all the way down to like zero because the power setting will limit the amount of gas that uh, will release when you press the trigger. And the third thing that just about every blaster has is some sort of way to cool. Now it's not always the same thing. Some blasters will have an actual pack designed to cool and others will just be designed in a way, they will just be engineered in a way that'll let them cool off. Like on the DC-15E for example, on the uh, the rifle on the front of it, the barrel of it, there are fins, and the fins are heat radiator fins, and these are able to uh, radiate out heat and makes uh, the weapon cooler because all the heat is being dispersed from the weapon. Now what happens when you press the trigger, and how does it work? So you press the trigger, and what happens is the gas is released through a tube and it's fed through a really small tube up to the igniter and that really small tube helps contain the gas and it pressurizes the gas it uh, kind of like you know how when you have a balloon and you squeeze in on it and it the more you squeeze the harder it becomes to squeeze the balloon because there the pressure is increasing inside there that's the same thing that's happening there it's increasing the pressure which increases the power and then there's also circuitry that increases the power in some sort of scientific -y way. And then in the clone blasters, there are two steps that it goes that the gas goes through, where it ionizes the blaster bolt, which gives it the blue color, because uh, remember the clones are fighting against droids, so they want it to be ionized, because ionized blaster bolts do really well against uh, machines. So that's not in all things, and not that's not in all weapons, but it is in the uh, clone trooper weapon. So then it hits the igniter, which as the name implies, it ignites the gas and that's what kind of makes the gas uh, kind of like expand, I guess. And uh, the gas goes through and it hits the expansion chamber, which allows the gas to kind of to expand, of course. And as it's being ignited, it wants to expand because that's what happens when uh, thing, when gas gets hot, it, it excites up and it takes up more and more space. So it needs to expand. So it goes through the expansion chamber. And then there's a big ray of electromagnets. And what these do is they take the gas and they pull it along through the weapon. And then there's an accelerator at the end of all that, which is just used to fling the gas forwards. And it goes through all there. And at that point, the gun is pretty much finished. And the rifles, there's this big long barrel, but that's just to give the, that's just to uh, get the gas to shoot further, because the longer the barrel, the 
longer the gas is contained, which means the further that the gas will uh, go. And so it's going through all this, and then it hits the barrel, and then as it and then it shoots out. And at this point, the gas has turned into the weapon that we uh, see today, the uh, the bolt that we see today that is actually lethal. So to recap, it, the, when you press the trigger, gas comes out, it gets uh, condensed, the power it gets amplified by the power amplifier, and the clones weapons they get ionized. Then it goes to ignition chamber and then it expands because of that and then again it gets kind of compressed and it, it gets thrust along through electromagnetic and the accelerator goes through the barrel and it shoots out as the bolt and then there are the um the fins along the sides of the clone ones which help expel the heat and then in other ones it's an actual cooling unit stuff like that because otherwise this this thing would get really hot and would maybe even melt and it just would not be it would not be safe to use and that's what i've got that's how blasters work next week thank you all for watching to the very end now you're like that one very special person kudos to you so next week i'm going to be talking about how you can actually make a blaster i don't know if it will actually work it probably won't work but it's just an idea, maybe how you can make it. And then in the future, more videos about how do how technology works in SARS in general, like how do how do lightsabers work and how can you make your own lightsaber? So stay tuned for all that. And of course, this is Star Wars Nerds and Geeks signing off. See you all next time. <laughs>